Hello, my name is Ray Bowler. I'm the Public Works Director for the City of Safety Harbor. Today I'd like to help you understand a little bit about hurricane preparedness. June 1st starts our hurricane season and it runs through November. So now is the time to start preparing. So how do I prepare? Well, first and foremost, you have to be ready. And hurricane season um, kind of throws us a lot of different balls to look at. This one was Hurricane Irma, September of 2017. You can see it's five days out. Where were you? What were you doing? So you need to know what your hazards are. Here comes an approaching storm. What do I do? What is your plan? How do you prepare is what is the risk? What is your risk? You need to get as much information as you can. And how do you develop your plan? You can go to a couple websites. The one that we have is pinellascounty.org slash emergency. It will give you a lot of information. It'll help you know where your zones are for your evacuation plan. And is your home ready? Are you gonna stay home? Is it secure? Are you gonna leave? You need to know what your evacuation zone is and I will help you with that. So it's very important is this is your plan. You should have a multi-tiered, multi-level plan. And how do you do that? Well, you need to know what the storm is, what category, where is it gonna hit? One of the major factors is where does it hit along Tampa Bay? If it's south of the bay, because of where the winds are, the northeast quadrant of the storm is generally the worst quadrant. And the winds push the water to the northeast. So if it hits south of the mouth of Tampa Bay, generally you'll have a less of a storm surge. If it hits north, north of the Bay Area, north of Tarpon Springs, you have all that northeast winds pushing water up into the bay, and that's where we're gonna end up with some storm surge. And then what are the winds? Remember, mobile homes are in the first evacuation zone. If you're in that zone A, you need to evacuate. These evacuation orders are mandatory, so you do wanna take care and pay attention to what's going on. Can you stay with your families? Do you have friends? How about your medicine, food and water? You know, the documents that you have, batteries, do you have power? Will you be able to do that? And you need to remember, emergency services will cease assisting when the winds reach 45 miles an hour of sustained. So the type of storm, we need to know what your hazards are. The wind, the rain, the storm surge. There are a lot of different things involved in this. The winds, major winds, are your categories four and five. Those are your major storms and produce a lot of damage. However, even the smaller storms pr propose hazards. So what are the rain effects? Well, first let me go back to the wind. You have tropical storm force winds, which are 39 to 73 miles an hour. Your category one's 74 to 95, and you can see what these are. Category two, category three, again, major storms, four and five. You need to be aware of what these are. So when you're planning, what winds are we having? Where is it hitting? The rainstorms, localized flooding. There's ponding water. There could be a hole in that roadway when you're driving down. There wasn't one, but because of the rains and the flooding water, you could hit a hole. There could be wastewater overflows. There could be animals, snakes, alligators that are in these ponding waters. You need to be aware of those. And then when ground gets really saturated with a lot of rain, a lot of water, it becomes pliable. So trees could actually tip over with increased wind effects. And then our storm surge. This relates to your evacuation zone. The elevations change per zone, A through E. You may be in a non-evacuation zone. If that's the case, that part of your plan. You need to think of all of these as you're planning your evacuation, planning your hurricane season, and you should do this on multiple levels, depending on the storm category. Is it raining? Is it just storm surge? Is it just wind? You need to know. Here's a couple of areas. The winds in Ike hit 
Hurricane, or Hurricane Ike hit Texas. You can see the difference on the screen on the left. The storm surge overbanked that whole little area. And then the flooding, that could be due to rains, Katrina, when it hit Louisiana. Storms need to be taken seriously. You need to know what your risks are and how they apply to you, and then how you can apply that to your plan or multi-level plan. So how do I know my zone? Again, Pinellas County website, pinellascounty.org slash emergency. You can go in there, and what I did was I typed in 1200 Railroad Avenue and got this one in the center, 1200. That's our public works yard. That's where we are on Railroad Avenue, and we're in zone D. So if there's an evacuation order for an A or a B, public works is safe. We're in a good area. It's when we get a major, major storm that we, the evacuation is a level D. Along the waterfront, and you can see along the right, South Bay Shore, a lot of red, and then North, Philippi Park and North, a lot of red. Those are low-lying areas, under 11 feet. That's zone A. If there is an evacuation order, zone A would be the first one to go. And again, the mobile home parks are part of that first evacuation zone. So you wanna make sure you know where you are, look that up, and then that will help you plan as you develop your plan. So then the question, do I stay or do I go? Well, this again, what was your plan? If you go to those county websites or even to the National Hurricane Center website, they have a lot of checklists that you can go through. And you can verify and develop your plan as to the different risks, the different types of storm. And as you see, we have watches and we have warnings, 48 hours, 36 hours. It really is better to leave early than it is to leave late. You can get stuck in traffic jams. You've seen it before. The hurricanes along I-95, where everybody was backed up on that interstate, that's not a good thing. Please plan your plan, work your plan, and if you will, leave early so you're prepared. If you stay, again, what zone are you in? What's the storm doing? What are the evacuation orders? These are important things. Again, I'll say it, mobile home parks. It's a mandatory that you leave once the order is given. You know, and then where do I go? You know, shelters are not fun to be in, especially if it becomes a major storm and you're there for a long time. We've noticed staying at home for a long time recently with the coronavirus is not as much fun as it used to be, or at least what we used to think. So going to these shelters is not going to be fun. And then what, which way do I go? Do I go north? Do I go east? How long do I go? And if I go, can I get back? These are all part of your plan. You need to think of these things as you move forward. So again, you have to pay attention to where's the storm going. If it's going north, then you don't wanna go north. If it's along the east coast, you obviously don't wanna go there. So, um, myself, I'll be working. My wife's plan is to go to Tallahassee. My son, my daughter, they're in Tallahassee, and she can go there. But what if the storm is off the coast and it's heading north towards Tallahassee? Well, then obviously we have to have a multi-level plan and my wife will not go there. So those are parts of thinking if you're staying or if you're going. And then of course, if you stay, there's power outages. We were out of power for a week last summer. There's issues that we could be, that you have to deal with. How about um, the food? You should always have food for at least a week during hurricane season. If a storm is coming, we could be without power. The grocery stores could be shut down. There's no travel on the roads. You have backup batteries. You have backup power. You have your medicine. You have all your legal documents. If you're staying, there are a lot of those things. And so be aware as you do your plan. And then what does your plan say? Again, know your storm. Go to those websites. Again, Pinellas County has a great one. There's a lot of checklists that you can see and work your plan as you develop it. And then after the storm, well, again, depends on the severity. Category one, category four. Obviously, a four is gonna make major damage. All these de departments, fire rescue, law enforcement, public works, engineers, building inspectors, power companies, we all are gonna be out. We all have immediate response plans for after the storm. 
So don't travel until your local authorities have said it's safe to do. Or down trees, down power lines. Are the bridges safe? Are the buildings safe? Can you travel? Can you occupy the buildings? These are things that those agencies are going to be looking at right after the storm. So be sure to treat any power line that is down as a live line. It could be backfed by a homeowner who has a generator and it feeds back through those power lines to that down line. So be aware of that. Trees are down, there could be cables in there. There could be wires. They could be live. Treat them as they are live. And then of course fire rescue is going to be out helping all the people that they can as soon as they can. And after the storm as you're doing your cleanup. Don't travel again until you've been advised to. This tree laying in the middle of the road. Well, I can walk around it. Well, what if there's a power line down in it and you get near that line, it could electrocute you. You need to be aware. So be sure. And then of course, if you've left the county, have the proper identification so you can re-enter the county. Um, is it safe to be out and about on these roads and bridges? Again, public works, engineering, Fire rescue, we're gonna be looking at these bridges, we're gonna be looking at these roads, and we're gonna make them safe, and we will be blocking off the ones that are not. So be aware of that. And then when you're cleaning up your yard, when you put your debris out, you need to separate it. As we apply for FEMA reimbursement funds, we have to track all the waste that we collect. So vegetation goes in one pile, the building debris goes in another pile, appliances, hazardous waste, they're all handled separately, so if you stack them in your front yard along the curb line separate, then we can pick them up separate and we can make our process of cleaning up the city a lot faster. And one of the things that the city did is our public works department after um, our hurricane was we were able to clean the city within 30 days where many of the other cities or counties, it took them months to get their work done. We were able to use our in-staff public works forces to go ahead and do that to help out the residents of the City of Safety Harbor. If it's a major storm, more than we were able to handle, we do have contractors that are on retainer, so if we need a larger crew, we can bring them in to help us with that large volume. And then be safe. How do you be safe? Again, treat every power line as it's live. Be sure that if you're using a generator, don't have it in an enclosed area. It needs to be outside. The chainsaws, if you all use a chainsaw, you need to be very careful on how to handle chainsaws. Down trees, hanging limbs, even the water. We maintain our water very well here in Safety Harbor. There could be possibilities of infiltration or leaks in those systems. If we shut down a section of water main because of damage, we may be on a boil water notice. So listen to your local authorities, pay attention to what's going on, and then same with fire rescue. Don't burn your debris. Fire issues could certainly happen. And then the flooding issues. If the water is remaining in those areas, again, be aware of any holes or depressions as you're out and about, the wild animals, and then again, wastewater overflows could be an issue. So please, be aware, be safe, and wait till the authorities really give you the okay to get out and about. So with that, uh, if you do have questions about this, you're certainly welcome to call me, Ray Bowler, City of Safety Harbor. That's my phone number at our office, as well as my email, and you can certainly email me any of your questions. I hope that helps you prepare, and be safe this summer. Goodbye. <laughs>